Shares of the obesity drug makers are mixed today after reporting earnings. McKesson lower 2%, despite stronger than expected earnings and revenue, while Lilly and Novo are higher, about 4%. All three shared a positive outlook on GLP-1, a.k.a. weight loss drug growth. Here's what the Eli Lilly CEO said on CNBC earlier today. I think a lot of the news is about uh, the Anchortons, Manjaro, and by the way, Joe, we have uh, half a dozen other uh, weight loss uh, medicines in the pipeline with different profiles, including one in phase three that could have as much as 30 percent weight loss in obese individuals. Um, so, you know, we're we're a serial innovator in obesity. Well, my next guest is also bullish on Lilly. He upped his price objective on the stock last month by 100 bucks. That was 20 percent upside. Joining me is Jeff Meacham, senior analyst in the biotech and pharma space at B of A Securities. Jeff, it's good to see you again. Welcome. You too, Kelly. Yeah, thanks for having me. Where are we in the hype cycle at this point? Because, uh, <laughs> you know, basically every possible headline, both regarding the companies themselves and the rest of the stock market, has been floated out there. Uh, but what are the fundamentals telling you about uh, whether their price increases and their prospects are justified? Yeah, it's a great question. Definitely, you know, this quarter, I think, was pretty good for Lilly. It wasn't dramatically better than expectations. They did beat the Manjaro number. Uh, which is, I think, one of the main metrics. Uh, but I think what, what you saw today was validation of Lilly's growth profile really over and above the rest of, you know, large cap biotech and pharma. I mean, we're talking, you know, 20 percent top line growth the next couple of years, mid 30s earnings growth. And that could be up to 10 times better than a lot of larger cap peers. And so that's, I think, you know, where we are in this cycle. I mean, I still think we're you know, very, very early innings. I mean, Manjaro, I don't know what the brand name is going to be, but Terzepatide, the name of the drug, the GLP-1 from Lilly, isn't even formally approved yet in obesity, and yet we're seeing the growth, you know, as it is now. Well, so, and we have a, coll a colleague of mine around here who's always so frustrated because right now he had been on on uh, one of the weight loss medications, maybe it was Ozempic, literally a shortage of it, um, and other issues are, are, are forcing him off of it. So, what do you say in terms of when these are going to be more widely available, even to just the patients who would like to have access to them now? Yeah, for the most part, I mean, obviously you have to get formal approval, and that should happen for Lilly by the end of the year. And then you'll have Novo and Lilly. You know, for the most part, I think uh, working on reimbursement and access in 24 and 25, uh, it's still not formally approved or not formally uh, uh, reimbursed by Medicare and Medicaid, but commercial insurance it is. Uh, but that is, I think, one of the biggest questions uh, for GLP-1s is, you know, how long are people going to be on the drugs? Um, once someone loses 15 or 20 percent or more, a lot of times they'll go off or a payer will force them to go off. But I think to get all the benefits of these drugs beyond just weight loss, you need to stay on a little bit longer. I'm, a, I'm looking at sort of coming off of the COVID cycle and the damage that's doing to the main drug makers there and thinking about, you know, if Lilly and Novo and these names all really need to ramp up their supplies to get a more supply into the market, are we going to look back in two or three years time as they're kind of also coming off uh, maybe uh, the peak and saying, up oh, now they're oversupplied and the stocks are down? I mean, how, how can they be confident that if they scramble to increase supplies, they won't be punished for that? Yeah, I would say for the most part, they're, you know, they're, the demand is there, no doubt about it. In just the U.S., I mean, conservatively, the population could be something in the 100 million, you know, uh, patient population, and it could be as high as, you know, 150 or maybe more. But Lilly and Novo are investing pretty aggressively in supply uh, and expectation of that higher demand. But just to frame it, Kelly, I mean, I would say, you know, here we are four quarters, a little bit more than four quarters into the uh, the Manjaro launched for Lilly, and we're already on a six billion dollar run rate. So hmm. it's wow. early, right? And and I think these are going to be really big drugs over time. 